So I had asked you to So annoying when people slurp their coffee and ah after, but fuck it. Um, anyways, um, I'd ask you to read a chapter by Blair. Uh, it was in the, I believe, the Hip Hop Reader. It's a pretty, pretty good, big, voluminous, um, you know, reader with a bunch of chapters written by a bunch of academic people about hip hop and journalists and some cultural members. And I asked you to read Blair's chapter. And basically, what Blair looks at in this is how something that's a youth subcultural expression form, in this case, hip hop, right? Um, uh, how does it go from, <laughs> how does it go from being, you know, subcultural, you know, anti-mainstream, anti-disco, whatever, um, you know, something that is, you know, raw, something that is uh, subversive, however you want to think about it, to something that's consumable by the masses, that something that's, you know, a bag of Doritos and a bottle of Coke, something that, you know, can be consumed by soccer moms in the suburbs, um, if the suburbs are going to exist still because they're coming for the suburbs. <laughs> Antifa's coming for the suburbs. Um, anyways, um, but I mean, you guys got to think about, in this case, we're looking at music that comes from, you know, racial oppression, um, cultural oppression, uh, class oppression, right? And something that's born out of that, which to be honest, you know, most forms of black music that have been appropriated and um, incorporated in the mainstream, jazz, uh, rock and roll, uh, you know, soul, etc. you know, those are musics that are born out of some sort of struggle, much like the, the, the struggle uh, an oppression that we've talked about in hip hop, those other forms of music, um, you know, are the byproduct of of those hard times, of uh, you know, of those negative sort of um, you know m ways in society. So it often means a lot when you have something like that, um, you know, that's subcultural that then becomes mainstream, and who benefits from it becoming mainstream and oftentimes it's not big surprise it's not the subcultural members right it's you know the people at the companies that are doing the exploiting that are benefiting um you know blair's chapter uh blair talks about you know karl marx's alienation now i know anytime anybody's here here here's karl marx old boys uh you know, uh, name or ideas being dropped it's like oh i don't want communism or it's like oh my gosh like what the fuck was that nerd saying, <laughs> you know, um, you know, and just to basically talk about what, what Blair is, is and, and why uh, Marx is being referenced here is the concept of alienation was like, basically through capitalism, we're alienated from our, um, other humans. We're alienated from ourselves. We're alienated from um, our own labor in the sense of the products of our own labor. So, um, in societies that predated capitalism, you know, you build a house, you live in the house. You, you have a successful crop, you enjoy the bounty of that successful crop, whether you sell some of it, consume it, whatever, whatever it is, you know, you, you, you're not alienated from your labor because you enjoy uh, what comes from it versus under capitalism where you labor to create surplus value for the capitalist, you know, so you're alienated from nature, um, in, in many ways you're alienated from other, other people, um, in, in so many ways. And so basically what's happened, you know, and in the case of hip hop is what's alienated as hip hop becomes rap records. This live performance, this live improvisational or even like practice routines, but this li the live jams, you know what I'm saying? grabbing power from the light post, you know, that energy, that vibe is gone, you know, when it's turned into a record. A record tries to capture all that, you know, the record tries to put that feedback, that vibe, like I said, like hip hop vibes off the audience, like a hip hop show, you vibe off the call and response with the audience, what they, what they give to you, you give back, you know, well, in a studio, 
you're alienated from your audience, right? You have no connection with the audience. So what they're kind of talking about in this sense is like that element of live experience of the jam is replaced with a cold piece of plastic that's trying to emulate that. That's what, where Marx's concept of alienation comes in here. So Blair references uh, someone named Gott Diner, or Gott Diener, um, and Gott Diener talks about you know, subcultural incorporation, that is taking a subculture and incorporating it into the, to the mainstream. You know? um, and this is fairly common. I mean, you think of anything that's like cool, that goes viral and becomes mainstream, you know, it's been incorporated, you know, into the mainstream. And usually in that process, it becomes massified. It becomes less raw, less edgy. It comes, becomes more, you know, consumable, um, you know. Um, so, you know, in the process of incorporating subcultures into the mainstream, you know, um, you have objects that are produced for exchange. In this case, with, with rap and hip hop, it's, it's, it's disco rap records. You know, are the first things that are produced for exchange. So they start making records, you know, um, those are meant to be bought and sold in a market. Um, and also, you know, you know, hip hop too, in its own way, you know, was born out of um, taking objects that were made for exchange, records with break beats on them, turntables that were meant for consuming music, right? and using them in a different way. And that's where it gets into the next phase where you know, the user modifies the object. This is a process called bricolage, um, you know, basically where through use, let's say of turntables and records in a different, in a different way, you produce like new meaning to those objects. Um, and, and that's very important specifically with, within hip hop because they're appropriating turntable, they're appropriating records, you know, they're appropriating other signs and symbols from the mainstream and giving them a new, new meaning. And then the last part, um, you know, is that once these objects made for exchange are incorporated into this process of bricolage by the subculture, then, um, you know, lastly you get to this point where these raw, edgy, subcultural signs are then turned into something that could be mass sold, that they're, they're turned into dominant you know, mass culture. They're, they're, they're made, uh, you know, and they reflect this cleanliness of, of mainstream society. Okay? And the important thing is, is, you know, once the subculture becomes incorporated, it, you know, it ceases to exist as it did before. It will never be, it will never be the same. Because people's intents and motivations behind, um, you know, partaking, they change, you know what I'm saying? And that's very important. I mean, you can look at anything, uh, punk music, right? I mean, that got totally incorporated. I mean, the, one of the most subversive, underground, anti, you know, um, mainstream things ever gets to turned into Blink-182 or whatever, and something you can you know, buy at the mall, like a style you can buy at the mall. Disco, house music, trap music has become you know, I mean, some music that was literally like a southern bass style of music um, that was drug rap specifically that had its own, you know, style and sound and snare placement and lyrical content and all that stuff is like shit that like is now mainstream on the radio all over the place that, you know, soccer moms bumping the minivan, you know, um, and it just kind of is, is what it is, you know, uh, but this is always happens with, with music, something that is underground, that's consumed by a lot of people in the underground, eventually someone's going to snatch onto it at a company, always.